Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business, as well as other things. And today we have a lot to cover. Uh, We're going to cover recalls. We're going to cover a few other things that I think you really need to know. And then on top of that, I'm going to introduce you to two 13-year-old full-timers. They just turned 13 yesterday. So if you don't know who I'm talking about, they actually are my daughters. My daughters are going to join me on this podcast in a few minutes. And you guys get to hear basically how the honey badger is with his kids. (laughs) They do full-time RV in a Keystone Cougar fifth wheel up in Southern Oregon with their mother. And uh, I think they've had a good time and they've made good of it. And, you know, just get it from a child's perspective, especially for those of you um, that are debating it. Maybe a lot of you have sat back and said, you know what, we're not sure if we want to go full time because the kids are getting either older or maybe they're too young. So at least you can get it from the perspective of two young girls who have been doing it now for a little over a year and a half. Okay. But first, what we really need to go over is recalls. And the reason why I want to go over recalls is because every single month from here on out, I am going to hunt for recalls because of what happened with RPOD, IBEX, and No Boundaries. I'm extremely still fuming pissed off about the fact that, you know, salespeople couldn't give me a phone call. Uh, you know, it, it, I'm sorry, this beast mode package suspension. I know a lot of you are really mad at me about it. Like you shouldn't be talking about it like that. And I'm not talking about the RV industry. I'm talking about the customer. I've gotten some nasty, nasty emails and comments from folks that listen to the podcast or watch the regular channel, super upset because I basically am asking Forest River to stop the beast mode package because it's a forced option that's costing way more money than it's worth. Because the reality is, let let me put to you like this, then we'll get into the recalls. The reality is, no matter how much of a smoother ride it might be for some of you, the majority of RVers, and I'm going to say this again, the majority of RVers are not going to be going 75, 80 miles an hour down the freeway. They're not going to be going into extreme off-road areas to go camping. And most people, especially on the West Coast, especially California, Nevada, Arizona, they don't drive more than two or three hours to go on a trip. And let's remember, Ibex, now no boundaries, and our pod are a travel trailer meant for camping, not full-time RVing. I, yes, there's probably a few of you that have a small teardrop type of travel trailer and you travel across the country in it. Congratulations, that's amazing. I love it. Put the independent suspension on aftermarket. At least that's how I feel about it. Okay, I, I just, I don't understand. And the recall, as much as it upsets me, it also just proved my point that it was a waste of money, waste of time, waste of energy. And whether you want facts or not, if you know who I'm talking about, My opinion does matter because I've been doing this a hell of a long time and I've seen too much stuff go wrong when you start fiddle farting with something that works. AKA folks, let's look at all the accusations and allegations against Grand Design RV. All the frame problems. And what do they do? They change things almost yearly. 
They tinker with something that actually works yearly. And look what that got them at. So I understand if you have an R-Pod or an Ibex or no boundaries and you love the Kurt suspension and it's amazing, good. But this recall goes to show you that it's an unnecessary thing to put on every single one of the trailers. If somebody wants to factory order it, fine. Make it a factory option. Hey, folks, for $7,000 more, we'll put independent suspension on it from the factory, and it'll take 12 weeks. Make it an order-only option. Instead of a forced option, because look at this fact, guys. You, you got axles on recall because of U-bolts with grand design, momentums, and solitudes. Now you're having circuit board LED light stuff going on with Heartland and Shadow Cruiser. I sell Shadow Cruiser. And they have LED black light circuit board in the cooktop range may fail, causing the board to overheat. 2,407 Shadow Cruisers, 10,038 Heartland fifth wheel and travel trailer products, including Pioneer Prowler, torque trail runner etc how about jaco now this is the shocking one of the day jaco is recalling almost 1720 motorhomes integra esteem odyssey greyhawk red hawk greyhawk prestige so it seems like it's mainly gasoline motorhomes but it says an inadequate connection between the power steering pressure line and the brake hydro boost unit may result in sudden loss of power steering fluid how scary is that and it doesn't even say it says the year model is 2020 to 2022 that's a lot of motorhomes to recall because let's remember there are not that there's not as many motorhomes built as there are towables so to have over 1700 motorhomes being recalled because of a power steering problem woo we yum i mean holy crap i'm laughing because this is, again, there's a difference in how things are handled, right? And one of the things that's not surprising to me is now Winnebago towables on the Access Travel Trailers, fairly new product, is having electrical circuit problems on the GFCI outlets, because they were wired incorrectly. These are brand new 2024 travel trailers. I mean... <laughs> now I get it. I, I, I understand more than most people will and most dealership employees do. Because I've done just about every single job at a dealership lot. And it's not fun. Now, of course, as always, whether you're watch, listening on Spotify, Amazon, our Heartland, or iHeart, sorry, uh, YouTube, I will put the link to the um, article I'm reading for the recalls in the description box. Okay. Now, I did find out, I got, so over the last five days... I've received some very interesting emails and contacts either through social media or by email of some shocking fans. I 
one I got today. I'm not going to name names or tell you who. We'll just say that these folks have some really good influence in our world. A couple of them have influence in our industry, in our community, uh, in our lifestyle, in the RV lifestyle. And then a couple of, we'll call them low-key celebrities, have reached out. And I'm appreciative of it. I really appreciate the 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 follow. And l- let's remember this, guys. Let's remember, everybody that's listening. We have to have a voice. They're listening. Okay? They're listening. Some of them are reacting really poorly and deciding that they want to attack my... Um, personality or attack my crit, uh, my credibility but it seems like the majority of the industry as a whole has my back outside of a few and I'm very appreciative of that um, I have a uh, I believe I have a very um interesting phone call i have with someone i'm kind of going to tease this not going to tell you who or where they're from or anything like that that's not fair to that person that they reached out to me um or had somebody reach out to me i should say through you know through the channels and uh so don't be surprised if i have some news for you Hopefully, um, I do have another person that has contacted me back that I believe wants to do an interview from a manufacturer. And no, it's not one of the big boys. It's not, it's not one of the big guys like Keystone or Forest River or, or Jayco or anything like that. No, it's not Grand Design. But um, I, I believe I'm going to get to do an entire interview and episode with one of the manufacturers a couple people just so that way you guys can get their perspective as well and you know and and just to let you know if i do interviews with people i've been studying the art of the interview by reading uh something that joe rogan posted and joe talks about if if he he kind of feels things out as he goes there's always going to be some warm up questions so i'm not going to pull a jd as people would call it or a Matt's RV reviews type of softball type of interview. If I get in front of these folks, um, I already kind of forewarned them that, you know, when I sit down with you, yeah, we're going to have a couple of warm up softball questions, but I'm going to have some hard ones too. Even though you're, you're, you're a good manufacturer and I support and love their product, um, th- there comes a time where you got to ask some hard questions so that way folks have an understanding of where they're coming from and how we got there. Um, One last piece of news before I bring these uh, two incredible little girls up here. Of course, they're not little anymore. Good Lord, they've grown. You can giggle now, girls. It's fine. (laughs) They're giggling in the background here. They're sitting on the floor, you know, going... Because they were sitting in beanbags and it kept making this wee, wee, wee sound. I'm like, well, girls, you can't do that. <laughs> this microphone picks up everything. It picks up every sniffle I do and every <clears throat> clearing of the throat I do. Um, one last piece of information for you guys that, that I believe is very important, especially if you're looking to sell an RV right now. There's a lot of folks that asked me, should they gather a big down payment before they buy a used RV of any kind, whether it's a private party or a dealership. And I want to answer that question very bluntly. Okay. There's a yes to that answer. And there is a no to that answer. The yes to that answer is yes. It is always better to have a large down payment, no matter what, no matter if they're being harder on lending or not. Okay. It is always more beneficial with a used RV to have a 25 or 35% cash down payment. Okay. Now, 
Does that mean everybody's going to agree with me? Of course not. A lot of you are like, no, pay cash in full. If you can't pay cash in full, then, then you shouldn't buy an RV. And then we wouldn't have an RV industry. Because less than 5% of the entire population of the United States of America can afford to write a check for an RV. Okay. But 25, 35% cash down, perfect. And then there's a no. Because there is such thing as waiting too long. Okay. And here's wh- here's where I'm going to go a little a little deeper into things, okay? We don't know when the last day of our life is going to be. There's no crystal ball to it. There's no predictability. It's not written down anywhere. Anything can happen tomorrow. Anything can happen next month. If you found something new or used, and mainly we're talking about used, if you found it on Craigslist and it's perfect for you and your family and it's from a guy that's, you know, at a house or whether you buy it from a dealership, start pulling the trigger in your life because you don't know when the last day will be. And for those of you that are older, I want you to look at it from a different perspective. And that different perspective is the fact you don't know how much longer you're going to feel up to doing it. How many more good years do you have left? So if you're ready, you're willing, and you are able, stop waiting and live your life. I give people the information about used RV financing not to slow people down, but to educate people. It's an education process to help you understand why and how certain things may happen so you don't give up. That's the entire reason why I educate you guys. I don't educate you guys like Liz Amazing to stop you from being in an RV. I don't give you the hunky-dory like some corporate RV dealership YouTubers do. I believe that a lot of you will buy an RV if you listen to my podcast and you watch my regular channel because you feel empowered. You feel empowered with education and you feel empowered with the ability to be able to negotiate your deal, find the right product. And that way, if you hit a bunch of roadblocks, you know how to get over them and you know why they happen. Because the worst thing in my opinion, that could ever happen is you get a bunch of roadblocks, don't understand them, and you give up like, well, maybe it wasn't meant to be. Excuse my language, because you guys know I don't like to cuss. Well, I do like to cuss, but bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Get yourself out there. It's not whether it was meant to be or not. It's whether you want to make it happen. And that's why I give you this podcast. That's why I give you the education channel that I believe that will be beneficial for the entire community and lifestyle. And I believe that more of you will do it. Now, without further ado, welcome in Brenda and Joanna. Now, since I'm the honey badger, we call Joanna either Jojo or Joanna Banana. And then Brenda gets her nickname Doochies. You know, like Bren Doochies. So say hi, girls. Come on. Hi. Hello. <laughs> okay, so you guys, when when Daddy came up to you guys, when I was going to go coachman, remember that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
And you know, we were in Vacaville, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. When I said we were going to move up to Southern Oregon to live in a trailer, what was your guys' first reaction? Uh... Well, I was more curious about Chilliquin, honestly. Also, I was very curious about how it would be like to live in a trailer. I was also extremely curious, also a little worried, because I heard that trailers are very, very small. Okay. So, when I took you to this fifth wheel, this cougar that we're in, mm-hmm. what did you guys first think? I know, because nobody's seen the videos. Remember, I, I posted all those videos about it on the main channel by the way if you guys want to know more or see more of the videos i'll post a link in the descri- in the description you guys can go watch the entire playlist of when we first moved into this thing so what did you guys think when you first came into it uh, i was personally very <laughs> excited so was i i was also surprised by the size of it okay outside of excited i was a bit worried about mainly um it like tipping over okay <laughs> that was a random thought of mine random thought we're a gin here yeah it's not bad yeah your mother would disagree with you <laughs> <laughs> mama needs a huge kitchen that can fit a huge dining room table that dining room table has to fit 10 people and there still has to be like a hundred feet of room for there to be able to cook <laughs> well what mom really needs is a walk-in closet right she does. well that too that too there you go okay um, you know, now this is not the first time you guys have been in an RV. Remember you guys used to go to the RV show with me in Pomona, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember, do you remember the first time you came out of a fifth wheel on what we call the solid step that those, those stairs that come up? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. I remember that day very clearly. So to give you guys a little background, uh, you know, I was working the, uh, there was the first year I had not worked the RVIA show in California. It, that's the 10 day show big manufacturer show blah 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 brenda comes out of a columbus fifth wheel <laughs> and it was the la- first time and last time i ever cared about the solid step for you, you have to understand it took three years for people to convince me that the solid step was a good thing because brenda took a fall straight down <laughs> I mean, it was like she took two steps and tumbled. Remember, she's like five years old at this time, five or six. She takes this tumble and, like, hurts herself. And the salespeople are like, I'm like, yeah, that's why I don't like the solid step for bunkhouse travel trailers or bunkhouse this. But apparently, I've changed my mind lately. But um, very interesting. Okay. So, now, we have an Arctic package on this fifth wheel, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's got tank heaters, all the winter stuff. Right. Does it still get cold in here? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, but I think that will be. Little. I think that will be pretty much any household in raging winter, especially yes. last year here in Chilliquin. Oh my gosh, last year I it was it was like Elsa or the Snow Queen or whoever controls it's the winter was angry, ang- angry, not angry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we also have to add extra insulation to keep us warm. Right, because there were things we had to do, right? So yeah, we had to, we, we skirted the fifth wheel the first mm-hmm. year, right? We put uh, we put uh, OSB with uh, in, in, Pink Panther insulation, right? Yeah. And then what else do we eventually have to do? Because remember how cold it still was getting in here? What else do we uh, have to do? Then we have to like bring in like a hundred different heaters. Well, oh, we we yeah. brought in three space heaters, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What else do we bring in? Uh, what else do we do? Okay, let me actually think about this. Last year was very chaotic <laughs> over winter. Chaotic. <laughs> um, yeah. Last year was a very chaotic Blankets. winter. Blankets. Well, of course, blankets. <laughs> That's a, like a Pure necessity. Silly goose. Um... I forgot. You forgot. Jackets? Well, what did we do to the windows? Oh, uh, yeah, we added, like, <laughs> the, uh... The bubble wrap, right? Yeah, the bubble wrap and stuff. Okay. To keep uh, the snow and stuff from making it colder. Right. So, basically, the windows on this Keystone Cougar, and on most RVs, are not set up for winter-type camping. So, one of the things that was constantly happening was the furnace was running all the time no matter what temperature we set it so here's the interesting part one day i go on a youtube video and this guy's putting this bubble wrap insulation on the outside of his windows with um oh what's that called stuff called that cold what that cold tape i forgot what it's called something tape 
Tape. Tape. Well, it's cold weather tape. It's like for co extreme cold. It's spe special tape for cold stuff. Yeah. So did we have a better time with that? Yeah. Yes. It got a lot warmer since okay. that point. And then for the water, we had to use what? We had to use a heated hose, right? Yeah, yeah. we had to use a heated hose. It still froze sometimes, and yeah. we sometimes had absolutely no water. Right. So a Four Seasons package, right? Yes. Four Seasons package. Would you agree package. that a Four Seasons package still needs stuff to be able to winter camp? Uh, yes. yes. That, that, the Four Seasons package is uh, kind of a lie because, I mean, the trailer was warm, a little bit warm, so, but then we had to add all the stuff and the water still froze. So, no, it is not for Four Seasons. It, uh, you still have to add the extra stuff. Um, except summer, you cannot avoid the heat no matter where you go. Even at the pool, you will still somehow manage to burn to death. <laughs> um, summer is un inedible. But point is, um, you still need extra stuff for um, RVs and trailers and stuff. Right. We learned that, huh? We learned yes. that the hard yeah. way. So the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that make a big deal out of having an Arctic package or a cold weather package or a four seasons rv we we live in a stamped four seasons fifth wheel and then we still had to spend money to stay warm and we're not talking about 80 degrees guys we're talking about like what keep it what 60 65 uh, uh yeah that's like it got down to the 30s it, last year yeah I got oh, like, no it got down to minus 10 minus 12 yeah that I, yeah. minus 10 was like warm over winter um like summer um spring was slowly coming and it started like at 40 and that's when we actually started getting warm right. last winter was brutal for everyone yeah it was a rough winter last year yeah, yeah it was yeah um so let me ask you girls something okay mm -hmm. so with everything that you've gone through living in an rv the last almost 18 months okay would you tell other kids that's a fun experience or would you tell them Tell your parents no freaking way, man. Um, it's actually a lot of fun living in an <coughs> RV. It might it be, is. it might be a small area, but you can get accustomed to it very easily. Um, and outside of that, um, it's not that hard unless you're having a brutal winter, or yeah. um, there you get stuff and everything gets messy within five seconds. <laughs> uh, but that's its own deal. That happens in any kind of household. Right. Um, but it is lots of fun, and I do recommend it deeply. Yeah. So do I. I agree yeah. with my sister. It, it might seem, I mean, at first when you think RV or trailer, you immediately think tiny. Tiny, you cannot put a, a singular person in that place. But actually, it's very livable and very and a very fun, comfortable experience. Yeah, my, if my sister and I can run around enough... Um, that we tire ourselves out. I think um, it's spacey enough. Okay. It's spacey. So what? Yeah. W so we live in a forty-two foot fifth wheel, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would you change about the fifth wheel? What? Yeah. Now you can't change the whole thing, but if you could change one thing about the fifth wheel we're in, which one, what would it be? Uh, not gonna have. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of agree with Mama on the kitchen thing. Um, there's not a lot of room to move around. Like. Mama is cooking, and at the same time I need to get something from the fridge, and my sister needs a spoon, and it's all, like, in the same tiny hallway, and someone else needs a, some chips, and we all have to, like, cramp ourselves in, and every, and something gets messed up, and Mama burns herself. Um, the kitchen, uh, maybe we could do without the island, not gonna lie, or maybe make the island a tad bit smaller. We can put the stuff on the table. Okay. Brenda? Uh, this is a hard choice, but if I'm going to... To be honest, it would be the kids' bedroom or the second bedroom because it it is really fun sleeping on bunk beds. But to be honest, it feels like I'm living in a very small closet. Okay, so you would you would you put a big bed that you and your sister would share? No, no, um, no, uh, no, no. <laughs> no. I, okay. Um, I would um take <clears throat> out the two. The two extra bunk bags to the side, and then try to um, push the try to widen the the bedroom a little by a little bit. Okay, so you yeah. put another slide out in there. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. So let me ask you: 
Mm-hmm. Are you guys tired of doing the trailer thing? Are you guys tired of being in an RV after 18 months? Actually, guys- no. Um, at random points, it can get frust- frustrating, um, but then it goes away really quickly because it's actually tons of fun. Um, it's really livable. Again, it's fun, and it's very exciting experience um again the most frustrating thing is the kitchen everyone somehow gets hurt in that kitchen because we cannot all grab something we all need simultaneously okay but at that point i think that's just us and no after 18 months i'm not tired of living at the rv to be honest i'm very comfortable living here yeah okay. um unlike my sister i'm actually really comfortable in the bedroom uh mainly because my whole little bed area um i have a little um it's nothing uh, where the tv <laughs> yeah it's all but stu- it's everything stuffed animals but the tv um the top of the tv where the tv um stays um i can put all my stuff up there i've made it very comfortable and i have everything i need even though it's just a twin bed yeah yeah um it's very comfortable up there my bunk bed is very comfortable, personally, and um, it's very personalized to me, too. Very cool. Um, one of the things that I've discovered about living in a... Because, let's see, this is now year... For me, let's see, we got to go back to Beaumont RV. So, Beaumont RV in Beaumont, California. I stayed in that transport fifth well while you guys were in Ventura. Mm-hmm. So it's been, this is year four for me living in a freaking trailer. Um, I live in a, a little Lance trailer now, but um, while I work. But um, so here's the interesting part. Okay, remember that we talked about, uh, and, and this is the point I'm trying to make is why I asked you that was, remember that I gave you and your mom a decision, right? Mm-hmm. I, tried. I said. You guys could, we, we only had the money to either send you guys down to Mexico to go see your family that you guys haven't seen in, shit, three, three years, years, right? Mm-hmm. Or for almost four years. Oh, that's right. Mom, you guys haven't seen him in four years. Mom saw him. Um, the other, like, um, last, mo- yeah. last month. No, no, you saw it. You, you were there when, uh, weren't you there when with Mago? Yeah, yeah, we were with Mago died, yes. Yeah, so that was, that was three years ago. Three, three years. Years so ago, it'll be yeah. three years since you guys have seen the family in Mexico. And I said we could either move everybody into a house in Nevada, right? Mm-hmm. Or we could send you to Mexico. And what did you guys choose? Uh, Mexico! Mexico! Right. And the reason why you guys did that is because you guys are cool with this, right? Yeah, yeah. we are cool with this. I got a good friend group now. And um, I miss my family. I have like three reasons. Yeah, isn't it great? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... You know, if you're on the fence about doing this RV lifestyle with kids, as far as a full-time type of thing, um, you'd be surprised. Like, the first reaction, like they said, was scared, right? Mm-hmm. You guys agree with I was, that? I was a little bit worried about spatial worried stuff. Worried about space, I, right? At the time when we first got here, I needed a lot of room to move around. And you've never lived in an area with snow. Right? That too. First time, that that right? too. Yeah. yeah. First time um, in snow. Yeah. No, like second time. We went to a mountain once with um, at Padrino Alex. I almost yeah. saw. Snow. Well, yeah, but that doesn't count. I remember how much your mother loves to be over prepared for things, yeah. right? Yes, we all know that. <laughs> Correct. She packs the entire house for go- when we go to Disneyland. No, she stopped doing that. True. <laughs> she stopped doing that a while back ago, but. Yo, know, but you know your mother, she likes to be over-prepared, right? Yeah. And do you think uh, over the last 18 months, do you think your mother's lightened up on the over-preparedness? Yeah, yes. actually a lot. And why do you think that is? Uh, uh, probably because we're living in a smaller space, not gonna lie. Uh, no, what else? Uh, well, we are... <laughs> we've gone through a lot of difficulties in this trailer trying to get set it up, and we've always managed to um somehow make it right. and do what we need. So we don't need to always over prepare for every single detail. We will figure it out. There you go. It, well, it's adaption, right? Adaption. We, 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 we've all yeah, we've all adapted to things, right? Yes. So you know, kids, wives, husbands, everybody's adaptable cat, as long as your cat, yeah, our indoor cat who hated Keep the outside. Up. Our cat, who hates the outside world, has now ba- now scratches and meows every five seconds. 
um, just to have like a little bit outside and she will run away at top speeds if I try to get her back inside. She will claw and kick and scratch until she sees the outside world. There you go. Cal cool. Alright. Um, also in our tiny space we feed guinea pigs so. Oh that's right you guys have your guinea pigs too. Yes. That's right. And um, we, have, about that. we have gotten <laughs> that pretty much figured out. We have them on one side of one bunk bed on the other side the top one then we have some the couch and then we have our beds yeah so if you feel like you're underprepared if you feel like you're not ready because of whatever the case may be and it's a lifestyle you want to try pretty much it was forced on us because i had a choice i could either at the time i could either stick it out at a dealership in northern california a great dealership with a good management team in fact uh kind of kind of miss eddie <laughs> eddie if you're still watching and listening to the podcast still miss having your and i's conversations uh at the in the tower uh at the dealership um still miss listening to some of the things you've had to say over the time um to pursue a dream uh, we pretty much had to live the lifestyle. And, you know, they followed me into this unknown, right? Yeah. I mean, we've gone camping in motorhomes. We went we camping have. in Jack. I miss you know, Jack. We went camping in a rental. We went camping in travel trailers. We've gone yeah. camping in tent trailer or tents. Um, we've done a lot of fishing, right? A lot lot of outdoor stuff, but this was something really different, right? Yeah, it was. So don't be afraid to follow your dream. Don't be afraid to follow your passion because we only get one life to live and, and we might as well live that life to the fullest that we can every single day with, within reason, of course. Um, but if you're holding back something that is organic because of, Something that may be happening in the world or happening in your life, don't hold back. Live your life to the fullest and enjoy the journey. You girls have any final thoughts? Uh, any final thoughts? Uh, Let me think. If you want to, move into a trailer. If you're, but like Data says, do what you want to do. Just be prepared for it. And don't worry about over preparation because you can get that figured out. Just go. be ready. Uh, my final thoughts are, kids, if you are moving into an RV or are your parents or your family's planning to and you're going to somewhere where there's snow, pack all your stuffed animals because they are very useful to keeping warm during the winter. <laughs> Trust Ask me. my sister. I burned to death up there in my bunk bed. I, I, I wake up sweating when I'm wearing short sleeve in the winter with the heater off. Oh, you guys are fun. You guys cracked me up. Ah, uh, man. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, you know, it's, it's so rare to hear it from a child's perspective because a lot of times we don't, we, we try to try to think for children instead of allowing our children to kind of tell us what they really think and, and what their, what their real fears and what their real, um, like what holds them back or thoughts. There you go. Um, but at the same time. You know, we got to take a risk. We got to take a chance. So, uh, f- again, I really want to thank those that have reached out to me. Um, I didn't know that some of you that are in the industry listen and watch. And I didn't know folks outside the industry that are quasi celebrities actually watch and listen as well. I say quasi because, well, they are celebrities, but I don't want to mention names. <laughs> anyway god i love keeping things private sometimes um anyway i want to thank you guys so much uh for all you guys' support remember the merchandise channel merchandise store uh is always in the description box if you guys want to support the channel and have you know get your shirts your hats your 
water bottles, things like that. And uh, until next time, have a good week.